Crab man What are your secrets So crab man What are you hiding From me crab man Crab man Hi there, my name is Curtis Monson, and in this video I will be presenting the skills I have learned in my Interior Firefighter Certification course. An important skill for firefighters is being able to quickly don and doff your firefighter gear, as when the call comes you need to get there as soon as possible. So I will be presenting that by donning my gear as quickly as I can. all there is to it. We have many different sizes of fire hose at the home for different applications. The way we can tell the difference is through this little notch right here. If you can feel a bump then you know that the sizes are different. For example, these are both inch and a half adapters for when you're hooking up to the truck. However, the size of the hose is inch and a half and inch and three quarter. The inch and a half is smooth, yet the inch and a three quarter has a little bump. Same thing goes for our two and a half inch, and let's see if I can find any here, our three inch. Pulling our hose is important for storage as we have like hundreds of feet of this hose and we need to keep it in a pretty small space. So a go-to is the donut roll, as you can see here. And pretty quick here, I will be presenting how to do this. First, you must deploy the hose. When rolling the hose, it is important to keep a few feet right here as for when you, this roll hose starts rolling up, this will creep forward and you want to be able to protect the inner layer, the male, with the female as the threads on the male here can get damaged and with rocks and dirt and getting banged against the truck. So we want to make sure we can protect that so we don't have any leakage. The actual rolling is quite simple. All you do is come at it from this end and simply roll it up. And as you can see, what I was talking about before is that starts creeping up. You just flip that. Once completed, you can see how the male is protected by the female. A key tool of the firefighter is the self-contained breathing apparatus, or as we call them, the SCBA for short. This consists of a bong, a pack, and your mask. And in the next bit, I will show you how to assemble and the use of it. To assemble your self-contained breathing apparatus, all you have to do is simply slide the bottle into the pack, line it up, you hear it click, then snap it into place, hook up your air hose, And once you turn your bottle on, you are good to go. Putting on your pack is a little tricky when you first start out. There's a couple different methods. The first of which I'm going to show you is the overhead. So what you do is you grab it by the frame and then it's as simple as throwing it right over your head and drop. Once the pack is on your back, 
tighten your shoulder straps, find your clip for your waist strap, clip yourself in, there you go, and we're rocking. Next, you get your mask. Make sure it's nice and form fitting to your face as you cannot have any leaks. Press this down on the front, pull your straps, and then you do a test. If no your air leaks out when you press your hand against the mask and suck, you know you have a good seal. Now I will simply turn that back on. Check my air, we're looking all good. Off up my mask. And it's as easy as that. The other method for putting on your pack is, I'll be honest, quite simpler. All you do is, and then, same as before, tighten your straps, buckle, tighten, and tighten, and you're good to go. Now, when our bottles run out of air, when our bottles run out of air, we refill them ourselves using this right here, which is our air compressor. Now, all we do is we slip a bottle in here, and then we have two hoses here. The yellow is for our 2215 PSI bottles, which is this one right here, and the green one is for our 4,500 PSI, which are these ones, and the main ones that we use when on call. 2215s are mainly for practice purposes. So, I simply unscrew, connect to the bottle, make sure that is closed there, and then I open it up. have a nice little thing here. So we're gonna wanna do turn these on. The beauty of this thing is it has a cascade system. So essentially you go from top to bottom. And now we turn on our filling station shut off. Excellent. And then make sure we turn down our PSI to 2216. There we go. And then once we are there, we simply turn on our isolation valve. And then begin filling. It's as simple as that. Now, this is our pump panel. This is what brings water to all of the hoses in the truck. Each one of these corresponds to a different opening to pump water into. And we have our discharges, our monitor, which is on the top. For filling the tank, we have this. We have this here, which is another thing for our monitor for controlling it from, straight from the truck. We also have a controller for it. We have, you know, our KPA, our PSI here. The, the CAFS is our foam system for when we want to smother a fire, and it lets us know how it's running here. And basically, you know, I'm not going to get into a full thing on the pump because that'll take me about an hour, but that's about the gist of it. These here are the main tools of a firefighter. We have the fire axe, or Pulaski. We have our sledgehammer. We have our set of irons, which includes our halogen, which is our force entry tool, and another axe. Then here we have our crowbar and another force entry tool. But if we pop this off and open this up, here we have our RIT tools, which is if one of our firefighters is injured or stuck in a building, we have our RIT team, which comes in with these tools and comes to rescue them, along with our Sawzall blade for any Auto X things we need to do. Radio is a key component to firefighting, as it allows us to communicate with other firefighters. Here I'll give a small demonstration. Firefighter Munson to Firefighter McBride. Go for 
Firefighter McBride. Yes, can you make entry on the Charlie Delta side of the building and sweep on the left side, please? Copy that. And that's all there is to it. Thank you for spending some time to watch this video, and hopefully you learned something. Once again, I'm Curtis Munson, and thanks for tuning in.